this is Sanvi again, and today I will be talking about the temporal lobe. Let's get started. Today, I will cover the overview of the temporal lobe, the functions of the temporal lobe, and the disorders and diseases that occur in the temporal lobe. First, I will explain the overview of the temporal lobe. The temporal lobe is the second largest region of the brain. It's located on the lower middle part of the brain, right next to your temples, above your ears. The temporal lobe contains the hippocampus, which is responsible for long-term memory. Fun fact, the temporal lobe has a thumb-like appearance. Secondly, I will be talking about the functions of the temporal lobe. The temporal lobe mainly revolves around hearing and selective listening. What selective listening is, is that it is a mental filter that makes us hear what we want to hear and block out the rest. It receives sensory information, such as sounds and speech from the ears. The temporal lobe is the key to being able to understand meaningful speech. In fact, we would not be able to understand someone talking to us if it wasn't for the temporal lobe. This lobe is special because it makes sense of all the different sounds and pitches being transmitted from the sensory receptors to the, of the ears. The temporal lobe doesn't only process sound though. It's also responsible for interpreting smell and even sight. While vision is mainly controlled by the occipital lobe, the temporal lobe helps you understand what you're seeing. It's the reason you can know that an apple is an apple and not a square. This also helps you recognize faces. Memory and attention are some other skills associated with the temporal lobe. In particular, the temporal lobe aids in the formation of long-term memories, which is the hippocampus, as well as visual and verbal memories. Finally, the temporal lobe controls your body's automatic responses to stimuli, such as hunger and thirst. Next, I'm going to be talking about the different diseases and disorders that occur in the temporal lobe. First, we have propagonosia. This means that someone who suffers an injury to their temporal lobe might have trouble recognizing faces. When someone has this condition, looking at your mother or your best friend can feel like looking at a stranger. This doesn't mean that the person has forgotten their friends and family. They can usually still recognize them by their voice. They just can't tell one person's face apart from another. There are other types of agnosia besides propagonosia. The most severe form is called visual agnosia. With visual agnosia, not only can a person not distinguish faces, they can't recognize or distinguish objects at all. A person with visual agnosia will have perfectly clear vision, but not be able to tell what they're looking at. A flower might be mistaken for a dog, or a pen, or, or a spoon. This type of agnosia is rare, however, and the majority of patients with temporal lobe damage do not experience such severe effects. Furthermore, I'm going to be talking about hearing difficulties associated with the temporal lobe. After a temporal lobe injury, it can be hard to interpret sounds, but it can also be hard to hear them. This is why some people experience hearing loss after brain injury. The problem is not really in the ear itself, but in the brain structures responsible for processing sound. In addition to general hearing problems, a person with temporal lobe damage can experience something called pure word deafness. This is where a person's deaf only to spoken words. They have no problem hearing other sounds. Lastly, I'm going to be talking about attention and memory loss associated with the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe damage can also have an effect on a person's selective attention. This means that they have more difficulty picking out one thing to pay attention to amongst several other things. For example, they wouldn't be able to focus on a private conversation when in a loud, crowded room or study music study while music is playing. The hippocampus, the structure in the brain responsible for forming emotional, long-term memories, is located in the temporal lobe. This means that memory problems are a very common side effect in temporal lobe damage. The most common memory problem after a temporal lobe injury is the difficulty of forming new long-term memories. In this case, to damage the temporal lobe doesn't make it harder to form new memories. It can also erase personality-defining memories. 
This can cause a person to have a drastic change in self-image and may even lead to personality changes after brain injury. Thank you for listening. I hope this was informative. Now you know all about the temporal limit.